So not being content, verse 6, verse 7, leads you to craving for goods and services you want, which is the starting point of a variety of other kinds of sins. It is through this longing that some have slowly moved away from taking God at His Word and trusting the Lord, and they have plunged into destruction. So what I want to do is kind of look at four things. Again, what is a root? Examples of roots. Identifying roots. And what to do about the roots. Specifically, on taking the root out. So again, what is the root? Well, it's the source. It's the origin. It's the starting point. It's the cause. You know, I researched what does an actual root on a real tree do? You had to be thinking about that here. Well, the root is the anchor that it anchors the plant to the ground. It supports it. So obviously if you kill the root, you kill the support, the plant's not anchored to the ground, it easily comes up. The root on the plant is what absorbs the water and the nutrients in order to cause it to grow. So if you kill the root, guess what? No nutrients, it doesn't grow. The root stores food and nutrients for the plant. So if you kill the root, no food and nutrients for the plant. You starve the plant. I was, I was walking by the other day near St. Philip's and there was this massive oak tree completely covered in ivy. I mean, the entire thing. And that's going to kill it. It's going to fall. And I thought it'd be pretty easy for me to take out all, those, that, all that ivy. I don't have to climb all the way up the tree and be ripping the ivy off. It all comes down to the ground right around the base. And there those roots are growing into the ground. I can just hack those out, pull them out, Cut them down, all that ivy on the tree is going to die. Take a long time to climb up there and rip all the ivy off. It's a lot easier to go at it at the root. Jeremiah 12, 2, it says, You plant them, the wicked, they take root, they grow, and produce fruit. So we see something is first planted, then it takes root, then it grows, then the fruit is seen. You know, it, it, the reason I want to talk about this is because I think so often people, they come and they say, I'm struggling with this specific sin. But the real issue is, what's the real struggle? Is it really that sin? Or is that just the fruit of something deeper? And until you pluck that out, you'll be chopping the weed off, it's just going to grow back. Chopping the weed off, it's growing back. Until you go and you deal with it at the root issue here. In James 1.14, it says each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. There it is. It's this craving. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. So you're tempted. You're enticed by desire. It conceives. It's planted. It bur- bursts to sin. The root is there. It grows. It brings forth to death. Well, what do you do to... S- Get it to stop growing up. You need to not let it get conceived. You need to stop it at the point where it's planted. Right when that temptation comes and there's something getting planted in your mind, in your heart, you've got to get rid of that root right away. If you don't, it's going to grow up. It's going to bear fruit. And then you're going to think, oh, the fruit. I need to get rid of the fruit. No, get rid of the root. Until you get rid of the root, the fruit's just going to keep coming back. You know... Uh, the thing that makes any counseling successful is figuring out what the person's real problem is. I mean, you can counsel someone for 10 hours, and the whole goal is what's their real problem? I mean, why are they doing what they're doing? Where's the cause? Where's the origin? And when you finally figure that out, you're finally able to actually help the person deal with it. You know, as a kid, I would watch these cartoons. And in the cartoon, you would see this thing of TNT. It was like dynamite. And there the TNT was. Well, I, as a kid, I realized the TNT, that's not the real problem. It's the fuse. The fuse goes all the way out there. And the cartoon characters, they weren't trying to knock the TNT away. They were trying to step on the fuse and stomp it out. Because if you got rid of the fuse, you stopped the bomb from exploding. You see, they dealt with it at the root. They didn't sit there, well, TNT's the problem. I need to stop the bomb. Yeah, you need to stop the bomb, but to do that, put out the fuse. Deal with the root problem. 
Now, Paul is telling Timothy, love of money. That's the root. Now, it, sorry, that's a root, not the root. You see, it's, it's, there's other roots. I mean, any sin can be the, the fuse leading to a bigger bomb going off. It's not just money. But think here how important it is. Money gets you the possessions, gets you the things you want. And so when you're not content, now you have a love of money, a love of possessions. You want something. Or a love of services. If I could just have money to pay for this service. And once you've given in to not being content, then all of a sudden this love comes in, this lust, this craving for more. And then all of a sudden you start this chain. And what happens? Paul says, Timothy, (laughs) it's through this that some wander away from the faith, pierce themselves with many pains. So let's look at the idea of progression. One sin leading to another. You think about Judas. He's a greedy man. Led to Christ being crucified. Isn't it interesting? Just a little greed, or a lot of greed, can lead to you being part of the Son of God being turned over and crucified. That, you know, that's a, that's a pretty deadly root. Look what it led to. Look at the fruit of it. You think of Demas. Paul told Timothy, in love with this present world, he has deserted me. What's the world full of? The world's full of possessions. The world's full of all of these things that people want. And in love with those, led to desertion. Led to forsaking. In James 3.16, it says where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. So where jealousy is, it's this feeling of I'm envying their attainments, I'm envying what they have, I wish that I had that. Where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be. There will be every vile practice. I had a brother come to me and he told me, he said, James, I'm falling into sexual sin. Well, the longer I talked to the brother, I found out that he had some selfish ambition in his life. After we read that verse, and all of a sudden it clicked in his mind. Wow! My jealousy, selfish ambition, because that's there, there will be every vile practice. So the jealousy and selfish ambition is leading me to view pornography. It's leading me to sexual sin. So the real thing I need to overcome, it's not specifically sexual sin. I can keep trying to take out sexual sin and run from it, but that's not going to be the cure. I've got to deal with the root. And the root problem is, I've got selfish ambition. I've got jealousy. I've got to turn away from that. And when I turn away from that, all of a sudden, it's not going to be leading to there will be every vile practice. You see, he's dealing with something at the root. He's plucking it out by the root. And you've got to be careful. Those roots will try to grow back. They, They come all over this world. You think about Saul. He heard Saul his thousands, has killed his thousands. David his ten thousands. What happened? A little jealousy led to many attempted murders of King David. And eventually, I believe, it put him in hell. Acts 7 9, Joseph's brothers, they were jealous of Joseph. They sold him into Egypt. Jealousy led to selling the brother. That's a vile practice, selling your brother. Just because jealousy leads to something like that. Proverbs 6.35 says, Jealousy makes a man furious. I mean, a man comes. He says, I struggle with being furious all the time. Well, that's not your real problem. Your real problem is you struggle with jealousy. Jealousy makes a man furious. You see, there's a root. There's a progression. One sin leads to another. And to overcome it, you've got to go to the root and deal with it right there at the source, at the origin, at the starting point, at the cause. As they didn't spare Joseph, they didn't with Christ. 
For Pilate knew that it was out of envy that they had del- or out of envy they delivered up Christ. Out of envy. Envy, jealousy. We're talking about where jealousy and selfish inhibition exist, there will be disorder and vile practices. We're talking about a progression of sin, one thing leading to another. Again, we see this idea of progression. 1 Timothy 6 4, just right above there, an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce, which make, which manufacture envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions, and constant frictions. I mean, I even found this in myself. I had evil suspicions about a brother. And I was asking myself, well, if it's really true that there's a root problem here, what's my root? Why am I still falling into these evil suspicions about this brother? What's really the cause going on? How can I overcome this? I don't want to be doing this anymore. And that verse hit me. I felt like I had an unhealthy craving for controversy in some gray, non-essential areas. And that was leading me to have evil suspicions about this brother. It was producing in me evil suspicion. And so the way for me to overcome is to get rid of this unhealthy controversy for these gray areas, for these non-essential things. And if I turn from that, then I'm not going to be feeling evil suspicion towards that brother. I'm dealing with it at the root, at the source. Proverbs 26.20 For lack of wood, the fire goes out. How do you stop the fire? Lack of wood. No fire. Get rid of the wood, fire's gone. And where there is no whisperer, quarreling ceases. Again, someone says, I have such a problem with quarreling. Well, where there is no whisperer, quarreling ceases. So you get rid of the wood, no fire. You get rid of the whisperer, you've got no quarreling. That was Proverbs 26.20. You know, everyone knows if someone comes to the doctor and they say to the doctor, I'm throwing up, Craig, I'm throwing up, what's my problem? Well, someone doesn't say your problem is you're throwing up. There's a reason. There's a root. Maybe I have some type of sickness. Maybe I've got some stomach problem. Maybe I'm dehydrated. And that's leading to throwing up. Throwing up is just a symptom indicating the condition we are in. And I mean, those symptoms should be red alerts going off in our minds. Something's not right. There's some weeds growing in my heart. There's some sin rooting up in my heart. I've got to deal with it. I don't want it to bear fruit. Evil fruit. Okay, what are we talking about? We're talking about there being a root cause and a starting point as to why you're committing the sins you commit. And that you need to take these sins out by the root in order to find victory. In order to get victory over sin in your life, what's the root Let me deal with that. You know, you think about dominoes. It's a little game. You you can line all these things up. You've got 50 in a row. How does number 50 fall? Number 1 falls. 1 falls. Bam, 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 bam. 50 falls. There's a progression. One thing leads to another. 2 Samuel. 11 talks about a mighty man of God, King David. How does a man of God like David fall into ultimately murder? Well, what happened? He, he committed murder, but before that, what happened? He failed in covering up that he got Bathsheba pregnant because Uriah was too noble of a man to go home and lay with his wife because he, did, he knew the troops were out at war. I'm... I mean, Uriah was a guy who's content. And he's saying, I'm just going to sleep outside of the palace. And so because that didn't happen, King David had to murder him. Well, before that, what happened? Adultery had happened. Well, what happened before adultery? Where was one of the starting points? Yes, I realize earlier, King, King David started taking more wives. Someone may say that was one of the starting points. He got a little loose. He carried off idols back. He should have destroyed them. He got a little loose. But for me, a big starting point for King David... It says at a season when the kings should go to war, David remained. The sin of omission. James 4.17 
For him that knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. David knew kings go to war at this season. And what did he do? He remained. And he's laying on his couch. And then that leads to seeing a woman. Leads to adultery. Leads to cover-up. Leads to murder. So the root problem? Sin of omission. How does that apply to us? You could read the text and say, in the morning hours, the time when Christians seek the Lord, someone neglected. In the morning hours, the time when you seek the face of God to be satisfied in the steadfast love of the Lord, you neglect that, you got to be so careful. I mean, even recently, Paul Washer twittered, and he said, when will I ever learn that if I neglect God in the morning, in prayer, I will fail? I've heard the oldest Christian saying the same thing. When I neglect God in prayer in the morning, the day is miserable. I even thought about myself. If I was to ever commit sins like King David, what would lead to it? How on earth would I get there? Paul said, let anyone who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. I'd be proud to say, oh, it's impossible for me to do anything like that. Any one of us could fall into it. And just like David, one little sin of omission, not doing what you should be doing, not being at the place you should be, can lead to adultery. So here a list is of possibles that I thought of for myself. I neglect breaking through in prayer and reading in the morning. Then I overeat at breakfast. Then I don't guard my mouth around my wife. I'm harsh to her. Then I lack self-control. Then I get idle. I get lazy. Because you know, I'm in condemnation now. I can't serve the Lord. Mine's will just sit around. Bad choice. My thoughts are wondering. Lustful thoughts start bombarding. I don't take the way of escape. I go and isolate myself. I go view pornography then. And someone says, well, I just struggle with viewing pornography. Really? I, I would say you struggle with neglect of seeking God. With neglect of breaking through with God. Because if you break through with the Lord, if you're content and satisfied in Him, you're not going to have to go and get these roots started in your heart. You're not going to have to go and pursue that thing over there. And so in my own life, when I see me breaking a couple of these things down, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to go any further. Three dominoes fell down. I don't want any more dominoes to fall. I've got to stop it right there. And thank the Lord we can. We don't, there's no condemnation for those in Christ. You don't have to let the 50th domino fall. You don't have to go fall in the bigger, shameful sins. You know, what's the thing people so often don't want in their life? They don't want shameful sins. But the respectful sins they're okay with. It's the respectful sins, like neglect of God, that lead to the bigger sins. It's these little things. I'm going to use an example my wife gave me. This is 10 years ago in her life. <clears throat> and David, could you get me that water back there, brother? Thanks. So 10 years ago, Bethany wasn't content with her hair. Now, this is real. Some of y'all could have the same progression happen. So, she's not content with her hair. So, what'd that lead to? She got jealous of her sister's straight hair. Okay, now the jealousy led to grieving comments being made towards her sister. You see, the progression has started. She didn't repent of lack of contentment. Bam, jealousy. Bam, grieving comments. Then guess what she did next? Wasteful spending. She went and bought a ton of hair products. The next thing you know, she's packing her bag to go on a missions trip, and she's got all these hair products. Why? Worried about approval of man. How am I going to look? And the next thing you know, her dad thankfully walked in, saw her bag full of hair products, and soundly rebuked her. Reproved her. What did she need to deal with? She needed to deal with the issue of contentment. If she was content in trusting God, that yes, even God, God created me in my mother's womb and gave me curly hair. I have no reason to be not content and be jealous of my younger sister's straight hair. 
Because that jealousy right there started the dominoes falling. It started the fuse that led to the bigger bomb. So someone says, well, I'm just... You know, my, my problem is my hair. Well, no, it's lack of contentment. Problem is jealousy. Lack of contentment. If you're content, if you're satisfied that God has made me as I am, then you stop the progression from going. You get victory. Being content would have solved the problems. If you're spending too much money on yourself, it's a red flag. You know, anxiety. What happens with anxiety? You're not trusting God. Why am I anxious? It's like I don't really believe. What happens here with these people? Through this craving, some wandered away from the faith. They stopped taking God at His Word. Not not being content is bad. Paul says, Timothy, godliness, holiness, being like Christ with contentment, that's great gain. In the eyes of the Lord, that's the treasure you want to have. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about identifying the origin of the progression of sin in your life and dealing with it at the root. Plucking it out at the root. When I was 18... I remember I had an ear infection in my right ear. And I had this ear medicine. And I would keep applying it. My ear would keep hurting more. What do you do when it hurts more? You take more medicine. Kept swelling. My dad comes in my room, sees me all swollen up, takes me to the ER. At the ER, they looked over me. In the end, they figured out what was my root, what was my real problem. Nothing to do with the ear. The problem was the medicine. I was allergic to penicillin. Until you identified that my real problem was an allergy to penicillin, we, wouldn't have, we didn't know what to do. It's kind of like, how, how do I overcome the swelling? How do I overcome it? You find the root, you can overcome it. You know, Psalms 119.9, how does a young man keep his way pure? He guards his way according to the Word. It's easy to rob the store if there's no guard. If the door is wide open. And if you neglect God, if you neglect the Word, what happens? Wide open for the devil to come in. How does a young man keep his way pure? He guards his way according to the Word. And the Word tells us to be content, to trust the Lord. He's given you everything that you need. The root problem in one's life for sin may be that they're not born again. They may not be a new creation. They may not have God's laws written on their heart. They may not be dead to sin. Sin may still have dominion over them. They may not be a slave of righteousness. If no root in Christ, one withers away. Matthew 13. The root cause is to be rooted in Christ. If no root, you wither away. As Matthew 13 says. Matthew 13, 6. They had no root. They withered away. The easiest way to overcome roots in your life is make sure you're rooted in Christ. Remember, what does a real tree root do? It anchors the plant in the ground, it absorbs nutrients to cause it to grow, and it stores food and nutrients for the plant. So if you're in Christ, you're grounded and supported in Him, you're getting your nutrients from Him, you're getting your growth from Him, and it's causing fruit in your life. Mark 4.19, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. I mean, riches are just deceitful. Like I said, you think if I get the money, it opens up all these doors. I heard about a man, he used to be a pastor. Don't know why, but he's doing the lottery. He won the jackpot. He had all these millions of dollars. It lasted 20 months. Then he committed suicide. He killed himself. He thought, out of his love of money, if I get all that money, it'll solve my problems. It didn't. Deceitfulness of riches. You see, it's deceitful. It doesn't really give what you think it's going to give. And the desire for other things enter in and choke the Word. I mean, be so careful. What do I desire? Are there things that I desire that I don't have under control? Because that could easily be for the love of fill in the blank is the root of all kinds of evil in your life. It could be love of a new car and you're, saving, you're loving all this money just to get this car. Bam, you've got a root that leads to all kinds of evils. Okay, what do we do about it? Well, 
when weeding, you must get it out by the root or else they will grow back stronger than ever. You're wasting your time in your battle against sin if you're not dealing with sin at the root. Now one problem is sometimes people don't want to deal with it at the root because they like the root. They like their sin. And if that's you, realize, as the verse said, you're not taking anything with you out of this earth. So why store up all this treasure on earth? Why be like Steve Jobs and die and he had $8 billion? He was worth $8 billion. And he took not one penny of it with him. And he stood naked before God and was judged. And he was a professing Buddhist. You know, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? What can you give in exchange for your soul? As you're alive, that's the time to start giving up your life to the Lord. Exchange it. Say, Lord, I want you to reign over me. I don't want to rule my life. Remember, sin comes in all kind, it, it, the root comes in all the root leads to all kinds of evils, different types of sin. Think of the sin in your life. Think of the sin you struggle with. It all comes from the same factory. If you look at all the sin, it doesn't say made in China. It says made in a heart that lost a view of Christ and wasn't satisfied and content in the Lord. Made in lack of contentment. That's where that sin began. Living for self. Being content is just vital. I mean, if you look at verse 6, 1 Timothy 6, 6, but godliness with contentment, which just means being satisfied, is great gain. You're satisfied. You've got all that you want. You've got all that you need. All I have is Thee, Lord. You know, I need no other. Verse 7, he's, trying to, he's saying, look here, Timothy, you, you brought nothing into the world. You're not taking anything out of the world. Be content. Verse 8, but if we have food and clothing with these, we'll be content. God doesn't promise you a brand new house. He doesn't promise you a car. He doesn't promise you all of these things. But He promises you He'll give you food. He'll give you clothing. We've got to be content with that. 1 John 2.17 The world is passing away along with its desires. It's all going to pass away in the end. I mean, being satisfied, being content. It's, you're just happy in Jesus. Are you happy in Jesus Christ? Or is this week of your life is your happiness based on something else? If I can just have that thing. If I can just get that. I mean, even me, when I was lost. If I can just get freedom from shameful sins in my life, I'll be happy. Wrong. Get Christ and you get all the freedom you want. Get Christ and your problems are going to be solved. First Timothy six seventeen. Later on, Paul told Timothy, "Riches, there's uncertainty of riches. It's uncertain. You don't know when the stock market's going to go up, go down. I don't know. For all I know, my house is burning down right now. Well, there goes my house. Cars getting robbed, computers getting robbed. Well, there goes all of that. See, it's uncertain. I don't have a guarantee that all that's going to be there tomorrow. What are we talking about? We're talking about." there being a root cause and starting point as to why you're committing the sins you commit. And that you need to take these things out by the root in order to find victory. I mean, is Paul really saying this? For the love, the lust, the craving of money, which is the resource to get you the possessions you want, is a root, is the origin, is the beginning point, the starting point of all kinds, a variety of evils, of sins. A lack of contentment. What he just told Timothy before that. You're not content. You're not pursuing godliness, Christ-likeness, saying, Lord, I've got all that I need in You. Obviously, don't be content in holiness. I'm always uncontent in holiness. I want to be more holy. I want to be more like Christ. I want to see more people converted. I want to live more for the Lord. Don't be content in that. But in regards to earthly possessions, things of this world that you're not going to take with you, be content. Be satisfied. I've got everything that I need. Don't have a craving 
a lust for more. Obviously, wanting more of something is not necessarily wrong. But if it becomes this excessive, idolatrous, I must have that, red flags. Okay, what are some specifics on taking out roots? What are specifics? Christ, Christ is our perfect example, isn't He? If anyone knew how to deal with a root, it was Him. Matthew 3.10 Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. So when you want to take down a tree, you don't lop off the branches. Now sometimes you do so they don't fall on the house, but you're going at the root. You're knocking the root. If you really want to get rid of it, take it out at the root. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. What's good fruit? Godliness with contentment. Are you bearing godliness with contentment? Are you becoming more and more like Christ? More and more set apart? More and more content? I mean, sad thing is, sometimes the way we learn to be content is the thing we really want. God gives it to us. And then we realize that's not cut out to be what I thought it was going to be. I thought that was going to give me more, but it doesn't. That's why people are always wanting new things. Okay, taking out the root. Hebrews 12.15, it says, see to it. goes on to talk about a root of bitterness, that no root of bitterness springs up. You've got to see to it. You've got to pay attention. You've got to be using your eyes. You've got to be looking. How does a young man keep his way pure? Guards it according to the Word. I'm looking in the Bible. I'm looking at the Word. I'm saturated in the Word. And as I'm doing that, when I see roots pop up, like I feel evil suspicion towards him, or an unhealthy craving of controversy, when those are starting to pop up, I'm seeing to it that as it springs up, I deal with it. I don't want it to get bigger. I've got to stop it right when it's young. Deuteronomy 29.18, Beware lest there be among you a root bearing poisonous and bitter fruit. I, I just put that verse in there for the thought of beware. You've got to be watchful. Be watchful. You're seeing to it. You're being watchful. Son of Solomon's 2.15 Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards. For our vineyards are in blossom. Look out for the little foxes. The little sins. The sin of impatience. The sin of neglecting God. Because you'll find it's amazing how often those are the very things that are leading to vile practices. Those are the very things that are leading to bigger and bigger shameful sins. King David didn't go to war when he should have. Adultery, murder. Catch them before they get big and have bigger roots and are more well grounded. It's harder to rip them out then. Proverbs 24.30 I passed by the field of a sluggard by the vineyard of a man lacking sense, and behold, it was all overgrown with thorns. We don't want to be the man lacking sense who's not dealing with the roots. Just like the lazy man, he lets all the nettles come up. You want to protect the yard of your heart and not let roots get planted there. Well, another thing to do is to flee from it. If you go on and look at verse 11, Paul says, O man of God, flee these things. So flee lack of contentment. Free, flee cravings and lust, whether it's for unhealthy, uh, unhealthy craving for controversy, whether it's the lust of possessions and things, whatever it is, flee from that and then pursue this. Don't flee and do nothing. Flee and pursue what? Righteousness. Live out the Beatitudes. Be like Christ. Godliness. Be holy. Be set apart. Don't be like the world. Pursue faith. Take God at His Word. Trust that God will provide. Flee this temptation to not believe that God is Jehovah Jireh, that the Lord will provide. Flee that and believe that He is. And if you look at the track record of your Christian life, if you're a child of God, you'll realize God's never failed you once. A lot of times the Lord waits till the last moment, then provides. He wants to see if you'll trust Him. Pursue steadfastness. You don't just want to have momentary conviction. Pursue gentleness. Be humble. And then he goes on to say, fight the good fight of faith. We've got to fight to guard our hearts, to not let roots sprout up. Well, 
For the love of money is a root, is a starting point, is the origin of all kinds of evils. Is there any sin in your life? Where does it start at? Where's the root? I mean, it's a good question to ask yourself, especially if there's a persistent sin that you haven't been able to overcome. Just like me, I was thinking, wait, why do I keep having evil suspicions? And then 1 Timothy 6, 4. Wow, wherever there's unhealthy cravings for controversy and quarrel about the words, produces. It produces something. There my little seed pack is that I bought of unhealthy craving for controversy about gray areas and non-essential doctrines and things. And then that produced evil suspicion in my heart towards the brother. So i got to get rid of that unhealthy craving for controversy. And then guess what? The evil suspicion is going to be gone. I won't have to deal with that. I mean, why, why give in to unhealthy cravings and store for yourself sorrows? I mean, what's it going to be worth in the end? Why pierce yourself with many pains when the hands of Christ were pierced on the cross for sinners. I mean, you're, it says you're piercing yourselves with many pains. It's like the guy who commits suicide. He's self-inflicting himself. By living for the world, by following these cravings, these lusts, you're, you're, you're killing yourself. You're piercing yourself. And there Christ was pierced. Bruised for our transgressions. Why go plunge into ruin and destruction? Why do it when Christ plunged under the wrath of God on Calvary? I guess that's all I have. I mean, again, the main thing is for the love, the lust, the craving of money, which is a resource that gets you possessions, it gets you things. For that is a root. That's an origin. That's a starting point. That's a cause of all variety of sins in your life, of evils. And not just does it cause these evils, it does what? It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. They're destroyed. They go to hell. Again, Demas, one of them. Saul, one of them. Judas, one of them. Rich and ruler was one of them. And the only thing that will keep us from being one of them is if we pursue godliness, Christ-likeness, and be content. Lord, You've given me everything that I need. Can I, can I just rest in that? And you have to do that every day. It's not like you get to a point where, oh, I'm perfectly content the rest of my life. Every day you have to remind yourself, especially when curveballs come and sudden cracks break and you realize, I didn't see that coming. I didn't think my plumbing was going to get broken. I didn't think this was going to happen. That's the real test. Lord, will I love You right there? Let's pray. Lord, I just pray that You would make us holy. That You would make us like You that You would do whatever it takes to make us set apart from the world. Help us to see to it. Help us to beware. Help us to catch the little foxes. Help us to catch these roots that begin in our hearts. Help us to deal with them. Lord, help us to love You, not money. Help us to be content, satisfied. Lord, everything we know it is just going to be stripped in the end. Lord, help us to realize we're not taking anything with us out of this world. Lord, help us be content. Oh God, I'm scared even for myself what sins I could commit if I am not content in You. Bless the rest of the day. In Jesus' name, Amen.